This is an example of an equilibrium problem uh, where we'll need to use an ice table to solve it. So, in this problem, we're given the chemical equation, and I've just written it a little bit larger here, uh, and we're given the amounts of two of the reactants that are added to a vessel. We're not told any, anything about the product, so we can assume that they're zero, and we're asked to calculate the equilibrium constant. So in order to calculate the equilibrium constant, obviously we need to know the concentrations of all the reactants and products at equilibrium. Um, so let's go ahead and build our ice table and then see how we're going to figure out the equilibrium concentrations of all the reactants and the products. So I need the, the initial, the change, and the equilibrium concentrations. Now remember, whenever we're working equilibrium problems, we either need to work in concentrations or we need to work in pressures. Because we're told that this is a Kc, we want to convert the moles of our reactants into concentrations. So remember that the, the equation for molarity is that molarity is equal to the moles divided by the volume in liters. So in this case the calculation is pretty easy because for both the ammonia and the oxygen I have 0.0, .0 one five zero moles divided by one point zero zero liters so the concentration is just zero point zero one five zero moles per liter or of course moles per liter is I can just abbreviate as capital M for molarity so I can put in my initial concentrations And I know the equilibrium concentration for the N2, because that's given in the statement of the problem. So I know that that is 1.96 times 10 to the minus 3. So the way I figure out the equilibrium concentrations for everything else is using the change row of my table. So because I'm starting out with all reactants and no products, I know that the reactants are going to proceed towards the right in order to achieve equilibrium. So I know I'm going to lose reactants and I'm going to gain products. So when I fill out my change table, I'm going to make the reactants negative. And remember that the 4 and the 3 come from the stoichiometric coefficients. So whatever sign I give to the change of the reactants, I have to give the opposite sign to the change in the products. So that means the nitrogen is going to be plus 2x, and the water is going to be plus 6x. And at equilibrium, the ammonia is going to be 0 0.0150 minus 4x, and the oxygen is going to be 0. Point, oops, sorry, I shouldn't have a negative there. It's going to be 0 0.0150 minus 3x and the water is going to be 0 plus 6x so it's just going to be 6x. So the way I figure out x is I use the nitrogen column of my ice table. So it's true for all of the reactants and products that the initial plus the change is equal to the equilibrium. So, in the case of the nitrogen, I know that zero, uh, I know that zero plus two x is equal to one point nine six times ten to the minus three. So that means that two x is equal to one point nine six times ten to the minus three. So to solve for x, I divide both sides by two. And I get that x is equal to 9.8 times 10 to the minus 4. So let me get some more room and switch. Alright, so again, I just have the same ice table that we filled out before, just typed a little bit more neatly than I can write it. So the fact that I have determined x will allow me to determine the equilibrium concentration of the reactants and products that I did not know. So in the case of ammonia, the equilibrium concentration 
is 0 0.0150 minus 4 times x, which is 9.8 times 10 to the minus 4. So that means the equilibrium concentration of ammonia is 0 0.0111 molar. I can do the same thing for oxygen. And so that's 0 0.0. 150 minus 3 times 9.8 times 10 to the minus 4. So the concentration of O2 is 0 0.0121 molar. And then for the water, the equilibrium concentration is just 6 times x, so 6 times 9.8 times 10 to the minus 4, and the equilibrium concentration of water is 5.88 times 10 to the minus 3 molar. Okay, so now that I have all my equilibrium concentrations, I can just plug these into the equilibrium constant expression, and that will give me K. So let me go again to the next. So my equation for the equilibrium constant is Kc is equal to the concentration of the products raised to their stoichiometric coefficients divided by the reactants raised to their stoichiometric coefficients. So I just need to plug in the equilibrium concentrations I calculated on the previous slide, And when I punch those into my calculator, I get that the equilibrium constant is 5.90 times 10 to the minus 6. This is what the problem was asking us for.